Jim Short Reed here from the Victoria Herring Enhancement Project, reporting from Victoria. Perhaps the gorge herring will come back all by themselves, like they once were in the great glorious old days of the gorge herring, when they plugged the gorge with life, gazillions upon gazillions of birds of a gazillion different species. Seals, sea lions, elephant seals even. Dolphins chase herring and killer whales chase dolphins. Predators we know and love live right below the herring. Halibut come in from the Pacific. Coho come in and out of the Colquitts. Chinook get big and fat for the long uphill slog up the Fraser. And being big and fat, the Chinook feed the people and the orcas in the harbor. Such were the old days. The perfect gorge herring spawning grounds do exist, right here, right now. The people of the gorge have done a great job cleaning up the gorge. You won't find cleaner urban waters anywhere in BC. The 66 hectares of eelgrass are clean and healthy and ready for spawn. Once the eelgrass is spawned on, the Pacific herring will do what they do best and multiply towards the gazillions. If we stop fishing and start enhancing. The story of nylon herring enhancement begins with a transplant. A fresh log boom was towed into Squamish terminals, heavily laden with herring spawn. The spawn hatched out, and as predicted, Three years later, the mature herring returned to spawn. They spawned on creosote pilings supporting the terminal. The stream keepers saw, that the, sp saw the spawn and saw the poor survival rates. The spawn was either poisoned by the creosote directly or by the oil slick that rode up and down the pilings with the tide. So with great labor, they wrapped 80 pilings with enviro wrap and things got a bit better for the next year's spawn. They put a long net in the water below the deck of the terminal, which worked even better. Squamish terminals, unfortunately, burnt to the water line, and the herring seemed to have migrated off to the bladder rack on the shore near wood fiber. Another transplant of sorts happened at Fisherman's Wharf, Falls Creek, Vancouver. It is said that a herring skiff came in loaded with herring, loaded with ripe roe and the last thing the herring did before dying was spawn. Damned inconsiderate herring, the fishermen had to flush the whole mess of dead worthless herring and live spawn into the harbor. Three years later, the herring returned to spawn on the creosote pilings and the newly invented nylon spawn enhancement panel was deployed. Right then, right there, right in front of the spawning herring, Ten years later, they built the returning herring to 38 tons estimated every spring. They fill up 160 nylon panels with spawn each every spring. They have spent five years researching a spawn transfer program with approvals from DFO and the Silwa Tooth First Nations and have done the first year transfer to Coal Harbor, Vancouver. Nylon has recently proved effective in urban waters. If you can get the nylon in where the herring are spawning, right then, right there. The First Nations put boughs and kelp in the water to attract spawn. This is a proven effective method, proven over many millennia. The herring will spawn readily on macro kelp. Added bonus, the macro was also edible and nutritious. Alas, macro doesn't grow in Victoria or the Salish Sea. The coast salish use cedar and hemlock boughs to attract spawn. The spawn is easy to scrape off cedar and hemlock, few needles transfer, making the spawn quite delicious. I use Douglas fir, which offers 360 degree prickly protection from predation. The fir needles also render the spawn inedible. Songhees legend has it that cedar was placed on the shores to show the herring the way to the Portage Inlet eelgrass. The gorge is our special backyard and many people help keep it clean. Let's take the next step and find the last few gorge herring 
and enhance the heck out of them back into the gazillions. Thank you. Jim Shortreed, Victoria Herring Enhancement Project.